Hello, everybody. My, nice, my name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. This is the Connecticut High School Football Preview for the Simsbury Football Program. I'm pleased to have back on head coach Dave Masters, who's been on the show quite a few times. Coach Masters, it's a pleasure to be able to have you back on the show, man. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Always like being here. You know, I think uh, obviously there's a lot to get into as far as the team, and I know you've had a very busy summer, but just talk to me about how has this summer been for the Simsbury football program? Well, we've tried to stay extra busy, I guess would be the best way to do it. We, you know, coming off of the, the spring and COVID and all the regulations, we tried to maintain all our Zoom stuff. And as soon as we were able to get in the weight room, we've been in the weight room through the spring. And, uh, you know, we started our summer strength program uh, we hired a new strength coach and we and we got our uh, a couple of our coaches to work and we and we were running um our our strength program four days a week in the morning so every day but wednesday uh, we would have our kids in here lifting and that's the incoming freshmen through and we had great numbers we were up um you know we, we were pretty lucky here we have uh you know registered right now for football over 100 uh plus without all the freshmen on there uh, and so we've been good and in this summer we've had over 90 you know we have averaging between 80 and 90 kids in the weight room all four days so it's been a great summer in terms of that they're really you can tell they're excited about the season um, the older kids and, and you know the kids that missed out they're they're fired up and ready to go uh, you know we participated in uh, the Berlin lineman challenge and we ended up doing pretty well in that. I think we finished second in that overall out of all the teams. And that was great. Our linemen are, are you know, really, they've dedicated themselves to the weight room and they're, they're pretty close group. So we did, you know, we did that and participated in that. We also did the Wesleyan team camp, which I know uh, you, you've spoken with at least Matt and uh, he was there uh, for that. Uh, and some other teams were there and, and it was fun to watch the kids play you know, that wasn't really something that we could coach at or, or, or do that, but it was fun to get our whole team there. And, and to be honest, we had to take three buses down because th that many kids signed up to go down. So we were a big group that went down and, and I allowed all the sophomores, juniors and seniors to go, but we trucked down from Simsbury four nights in a row to go to Wesleyan, you know, and, and, the, and the kids loved it. So you know, we've had really good attendance at our stuff. We, you know, we did our youth camps and we did our, we started a flag football league in town. You know, just really active, really busy summer. As you were going through the summer workouts, coach, with the team, were you, because it sounds like, not to say you were shocked by the numbers, but you seemed very happy and pleased by the amount of players that were coming out for weightlifting and such, but also the work that they put in during the COVID season last year. Yeah, well, I mean, any chance they could, it, it, this is, it's, it's not to say that it's, it's different. It's just, you know, you, you don't, I don't know if it, it was consistently, you know, we didn't have to go seek anything out. It, it was really nice. You know, they're, I think they're just ready to do football stuff. So I, I, you know, we had the, the meetings were well attended, the lifts were well attended, and I think they're just ready to go. They're just pretty excited to, to, to get back at it. And I, you know, there's not the same kind of suspicion in terms of, well, are we going to have a season? Or are we not going to have a season? And I think they're just, you know, they put their foot down and they're going now. However, that plays out, it plays out. But right now we're not dealing with the same kind of stuff the, that we dealt with last year with the, you know, I, I don't think anyone a hundred percent, no matter how they told you last year, thought it was going to go the way we all wanted it to go. You know what I mean? So the reality of that was hanging over everyone's head last year. And now I think that's just, I think they're ready, you know, to go. And I think they just put their feet down and, and, and head down and went. As you were watching the players during the summer workouts and then at Wesley and such, just give me the feedback on how they looked. Were you surprised because was it better than you thought? Was it right what you thought maybe just because of the lost season? Because just from the video that I watched and just with talking with you, coach, it sounds like, Simsbury didn't even miss a beat. And like you said, you didn't have to watch anybody. Everybody policed themselves and the team policed themselves. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, 
they I wasn't surprised. I mean, you never know, I guess. I mean, they haven't had any contact and there's a lot to be determined, you know. Mm -hmm. The the numbers are there and, and everyone's working really hard, but you know, you can't replace uh field time with with you know that kind of experience is kind of invaluable in how to compete in those situations. So when you look at it, we're, you know, we've got a few guys that played in that Cheshire game, you know, and during that season, you know, in 2019, but we don't have a lot of game experience. So I was, I did enjoy the experience at Wesley and watching them play as aggressive as they were. There's some tools there that, you know, that I was pleased to see, you know, I think their dedication to improving their strength and their conditioning, you know, on their own and, and really their willingness to learn the playbook and attend the meetings and do all those things. Those are all good signs. But there's that piece of that the mystery piece is no one knows how anyone's going to do once you're the lights come on and you're you, know, you got to hit somebody and you really and you get hit for the first time or, you know, a sophomore who's never played football is, you know, there's a lot of those kind of questions that we all face. And so surprised and not pl very pleased at the effort that the kids and coaches have put in for really, two, you know, since December 2019, you know what I mean? It's been a long time coming through the, you know, the football season in the fall and through the off season. So really kind of happy and pleased, I would say, and hopeful you know, in terms of what I see, in terms of effort, commitment, you know, they're, there's, I, I call it compelled behavior when they kind of intrinsically do it on their own and they're not externally motivated by a coaching staff. And they, that's kind of what I'm seeing and I'm happy to see that for sure. Now with OTA starting tomorrow and such, what are you kind of with the players that you know, obviously, I would say all of them will be there unless something happens, whatever. What are you going into OTA specifically? Are you trying to break it down to uh, square one just because of the lost season? Like you said, you've been away for the game for a while. What, like, what is the strategy? What is the game plan for OTAs? Not much different. I mean, I I feel like in, you know through the the um, through the carryover from the fall and the constant communication. You know, we're going to make sure that we, our goal in the off season was to hit the ground running and to do whatever we could do to make sure that we didn't miss a beat. And so I feel like we've done that. So in terms of us being ready to go, you know, I feel like we are ready to go. I feel like we, we aren't steps behind. As a matter of fact, we may be farther ahead in some ways um, in terms of you know, the kids study, you know, I can check huddle and see what they're studying. I can, you know, there's lots of different ways to, to evaluate and kind of see where they're at. And I'm pleased where we're at. I feel like through the coaching staff, through the kids, through the, the, the pieces that I mentioned before, I feel like we're just ready to go. So I don't, I don't feel like we're going backwards anyways. I, I don't feel like we've taken steps back. I don't feel like we need to. I feel like we have expectations we are going to hold every, and it may take longer for everyone to learn how things are done around here, you know, but that's okay. We've been here before. We'll do it again. You know, the way is the way the expectation is the expectation and we just go, we, you know, we're not going to try and rework what we've done. We're just going to hold the same expectation. And we've had a meeting staff meeting the other night. If things are going slower, we slow it down. If we can go faster, we go faster, whatever the situation is, we'll adapt. It's, you know, but we're going to hold to the same standard and have the same expectation. We have a couple of milestone points. You know, we scrimmage Weathersfield on the 25th. We have certain things we need to be ready for that. Then we go to, down to St. Joe's and scrimmage a bunch of teams. We need to have certain things in place by then. And so we'll do whatever it takes to get those things done and, and be able to check those things off. So we're ready to go. When you talked about the players and you, you know, the program itself and you feel like you're steps ahead, what makes you so confident in that coach? Is that something that just can't be really, really kind of explained? It's just a gut feeling that you have because of all the experience and the knowledge that you have of the game of football? No, I think steps ahead being that, you know, when I talk about that compelled behavior, they're showing up to things they should show up for. We're not chasing anybody down to do anything. You know, the registration I checked today, you know, the kids have signed up and gotten all their paperwork in on time. Like I'm not chasing people down for, those are what I mean by steps ahead. Those are what I'm 
what I'm referring to. The football pieces, I don't know. You know, we're like, a, we'll have to just see it and go with it and, and go from there. I just don't want to start off at a, a different point. I want to start off where we start off and then we're going to work from there, hit those checkpoints. But my confidence comes from their effort this whole entire time. If we hold the leadership meeting, there's 60 kids there. If we go, you know, we took that leadership trip. We had a bunch of kids go to that. Like their, their, their compelled behavior or their focus and their commitment is what gives me confidence that we can start from where we should be starting from, you know, and, the, you know, not have to backtrack too much in terms of this is how we do things. So I'm hopeful that we have that starting point. So confidence is a, <laughs> is a tricky word. You know, I'm I'm hopeful and I feel good about the kids' attitudes, effort, and their commitment. And so that's what kind of gives me, you know, some pot, you know, makes me feel a little positive. Is there any group, either the wide receivers, the offensive line, the quarterbacks, is there any group that has really jumped out to you early on as far as from the Simsbury program itself? The linemen. You know, witnessing it at Berlin Lineman Challenge, I mean, they were excited. They're they they're they're bigger, they're stronger, they're dedicated. You know, they're really a focused group. Uh, you know, they're sending me pictures when they go out to lunch on Friday. You know, random times in the summer. You know, as a group. You know, they're that group together is is um, is you know a group that's really stuck out and, and gone. But. You know, I, you know, I can come in and, I, you know, I was driving by the turf, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and our quarterback had the receivers out and they were working, you know, and I saw, you know, I was like, oh, who's that on the turf? Oh, it's our guys. So, you know what I mean? It's, those are some things that go back to that other piece. Like they all have that kind of internal thing right now. And I'm hoping that allows us to progress, but that mystery piece is still over. How's it going to be, you know, when it, you know when they put the cleats on and we're on turf and we're padded up we'll see how that goes. Now take me into a Wednesday, a Wednesday lunch for offensive linemen. What was on the menu for that? What, I don't know. what were they saying? Anything and everything. I don't know. We, we <laughs> traditionally at Simsbury, I wouldn't say we're the largest group ever. You know, we, we really committed ourselves to being as whatever we weigh. Cause we're not generally, you know, we're not six, eight and 300 pounds up here. But, you know, we've done a pretty good job of being strong uh, and fast, and that's kind of what we've done. But we're, we're lucky enough to, like Sam Scott and a couple of those others, Gavin Butler that we had in 2019, we're starting to get the – we've had some kids, you know, tall, big, wide, heavy, and we're starting to see some of that. So I think at that lunch they were eating whatever they want to and lots of it. So at least that's what we hope. Eat as much as you can, as often as you can. Hey, I got snacks in here. I, got, I have snacks all over the office, and it's not for the, the, the receivers. You know what I mean? Although my running back spends more time in here eating than anybody else. Your office coach, I've told you, it, all, all you're missing is a bed, and you can live there. It's so nice. Well, that'd be bad. I'm never doing that. So there's, there's time to go home. Yeah, I'm lucky I, I did, you know, confiscated this storage space at some point, you know, seven years ago. <laughs> it's allowed us to to really have a, 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 a comfortable spot for us to, to work from. But, you know, it's nice to be able to get together and have all the tools that you need to, to coach with in one space. So that it, it, it is nice, and I do recognize it. It, is, it sure is nice. And it's very important, Coach, to have those tools. I mean, there's a lot of staffs who do not have the kind of things that others do. And for one thing or, you know, one thing or another, they just don't have that. And I think – when I think of Simsbury, on top of everything else that the program does, and you guys are a well-run program, it starts with you and it goes down to the rest of your staff. I remember when I had you on for the first time, you talked to me about how you do not really have to stand over and watch every single position. You can kind of just rover because of the coaches that you have, and that allows you to really kind of get almost like the Belichick way, where you just look and just make sure that everything's being run well. And then you can do your thing as a head coach. Well, I think I'm lucky in a lot of respects, you know, and I recognize that like there's, there's no football coach that runs a football program and should take the credit because there's a quadrillion other pieces that go into it. And it really starts with our, you know, the principal we have and the athletic director we have that supports football and understands what it can do for kids. And, you know, we affect a large amount of kids every year and, and really, 
for us in this program, we've always focused on what what football can do for kids that leave the program. That's what we base our that's our philosophy on stuff, which is the same as everybody's philosophy. That that's what's beautiful about football is the men, the boys, the girls, the women, whoever plays and is involved with the sport, it touches in a different way. And every football program has that. We're lucky here because I have a great AD. I have a great principal. I have outstanding coaches. I really do. I, you know, you know, just sitting in the meetings, they run meetings, they lead meetings. We work well together and everyone has their role and stuff. And I'm, I'm truly lucky about that. You know, I have a large coaching staff, a very large coaching staff, and that's lucky in itself, you know, to be able to have that amount of people where you can have, you know, specific skill position coaches that really put the time in, do the film, coach their positions. And then off the field, they spend time with those guys, like the, the, the offensive linemen are out to lunch, but their offensive line coaches with them. So those are the kinds of things that every football coach like myself, who tries to organize it all, is lucky to have. And I feel blessed all the time. I, I tell everybody, you know, it, it's a great situation to be in given the fact that my coaches are outstanding and my parent group, the Gridiron Club, they're phenomenal. Like, so those pieces, you know, it's not missed on me. You know what I mean? I feel lucky all the time. And there's one assistant coach that you have that I've had the opportunity to talk with quite a bit during the summer, uh, Coach Moose. And his, like, how great is it to have a guy like him who has such a high football IQ, but also a very cerebral mind when it comes to offensive style and scheming, because I feel like having him coach, it, it, it allows you to not even, I don't want to say not to have to worry about that side of, of the football, but you can kind of just sit back and just, just watch the work that he puts in. Well, it's rare. He, first of all, he's priceless. And I know that. And, and I, you know, he's a, he's a great ex no guy. Yes the pieces that people don't see are, are his ability to, to engage kids in the weight room, in the hallway. And, the, you know, he's a, I feel lucky every day with coach Moose and he started with me back in 2015. You know, I, I was able to, to, to secure him because I wanted a different style of offense. You know, I'm a triple option guy. That's where I, that's where I, you know, made my money from to, you know, 1993 to, 2003, you know what I mean, or whatever it was, or 2015, I don't even know, but a long time. And so that's my wheelhouse. Running his style offense is not my wheelhouse. So you want to secure the pieces that you know are gifted in that area, and he's gifted in that area. So, you know, he's taught me as much as he's taught the players over the past, you know, few years. And so I feel lucky to have him. And then my defensive coordinator is the same way, you know. Very rarely do I have to interject, veto, override, do any of those things because I have total trust in those things. Now, we have those meetings and we talk about those things, but there's no surprises. There's no, you know, nothing, you know, all of a sudden goes off the, the path and, and, and we're, you know, we're not on the same page. It's rare that we're not all on the same page in terms of all the program from, from me to the coordinators, to the unit leaders, to whatever it is. And really those two gentlemen, put the work in uh, Mike Fury and, and Moose all the time. They're constantly working in the off season and in season. And so that's another reason, you know, you feel lucky as a, as a guy like me that, you know, when you're getting texts and they're saying, Hey, what do you think about this? And it's, you know, May and the middle of the night, that's good stuff. You know what I mean? And, and that happens in football programs all over the state, you know what I mean? And, and, and you're lucky when you have that, it doesn't last forever necessarily so you try and capture it and keep it going and we've been lucky here to have the same coaching staff basically since 2015 so kind of you know a lot of luck and a lot of blessings over here for me and it's hard to have that because as you know in any sport when there's a, a a top young coach typically they don't stay around long i mean you think about the offensive coordinator for lsu at the time former offensive coordinator now he's with carolina brady you know he helped basically joe burrow become a first overall pick now he's coaching with uh, with the Panthers, and he'll probably be a head coach within the next year or two. So guys like that typically do not stay long. It's not because they don't want to. It's because they have aspirations of getting a position that they can't get at the time. So I think, like you said, 
keeping the staff together as a, a collective whole not only allows the comfortability and not have to worry about certain things, coach, but also too, it, you know, it allows you to, to build relationships and trust. That is so huge in any sport, particularly football, like you mentioned with Moose, your defensive coordinator, having that trust. Yeah, you, there's no surprises at this point, you know what I mean, or very few. And, you know, the the amazing thing is that their work ethic, you can trust that they're going to do it and they, they work, to, they talk to each other. And it's just really, it's just a great thing to be able to hold on to that core group for as long as we have. You know, I think it totally makes a difference in the program. Coaching is everything in football, you know, it really matters. And it's not me, it's the assistants, you know, it's the guys that are grinding it out. It's the, it's the guys that are putting in the work at endless hours, the guys that are making the direct con. like all those things have to work together. You know, the, the program has to run a certain way. The assistant coaches have to, like all those pieces have to come together. And when you have a coaching staff that's worked together as long as we have together, I think that's a, that it can only benefit the program. You know what I mean? There's no retraining of, how we do things with the coaches necessarily. We do add some coaches. We, we've we added a couple more this year. So, you know, our total is, is good. You know, we feel confident in that. But, you know, we have a mass and a core that's kind of been stayed together. You know, it also too, it, 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 you know, it helps the players as well, particularly because of what happened last year because of the COVID season. Even though there was a little bit of practice, seven on seven, et cetera, still it's, it's not the same as putting on the pads and, you know, going under the lights and, and such. And I think to have that same staff, and I understand some of the players are obviously different. Some are a lot older than what they were in 2019. Just to have that ability to see that same face, the same offensive coordinator, the same defensive coordinator, it allows the older group to help the younger group because they know what they're getting themselves into. I'm talking about the older group. So it kind of cancels out that, that learning curve in a sense that could take a little bit longer and it allows you guys to focus on in-game stuff rather than teaching the little things early on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the, like, if you establish some, I think we, you know, having the same coaching staff in this situation in COVID has really helped as well because when you have to, you have a gap year is what I guess is the best way to call it. You really have to refer back to those things and, that's a long time ago in football years, you know, that's a long time. So that helps. And then the older kids help. But also I think, I think, you know, uh, a guy who we, you know, we, we've talked before about the leadership thing that we meet every month and, and that hasn't ever stopped. And I think that's a nice tie. Anything that you can tie in and weave throughout the year that gives you a foundational piece to, as a starting point really helps in, in terms of not having to backtrack and have to redo teach the way how things are done around here and that just gets back to you know the confidence and how i'm hopeful i guess i guess is and i'm just hoping that those pieces will come through and, and support what we're trying to do here and coach you talked about early uh, early in the podcast about the youth camps how did that go coach because it looked like it was a very well uh turnout as far as people coming to the camp yeah, I mean, we had uh, we ran two camps. We did one at the beginning of summer, and then we did one at the um, the week before uh, football started. And uh, we had good numbers for the camp, and the players, the coaches, you know, we all are involved in that. And then we also, in between the two camps, um, we started a, a flag football football night here on the turf and. We had uh, over 100 and some kids sign up for that to come. And we divided them up and the coaches ref the games. The, my players, our players, the Trojan players coached each team. Uh, and then we ran a, a night series flag football game uh, where the kids came about 15 minutes of warm up and then they played flag football. Uh, parents were watching and we turned the lights on and it was just fun. It was a fun event, but our mission was to try and show how great football is and, you know, and, and really try and, and, and expose anybody and everybody to football. So we did have good turnout with that, but again, that has a lot to do with, you know, the coaches and the players being involved in all that stuff as well. You know, they're not coming to camp to see coach masters. They're coming to camp to see John Myrano. They're coming, you know, they're coming to see Evan Wallace, my quarterback. They're coming to see the kids 
and my coaching staff, who is a lot younger than me and a lot more fun than an old ball guy, you know, on the field. So, you know, all those pieces are, are, are the things that I hope that not only can propel football and keep it going, um, but also around here specifically to some degree, you know, I, you know, how I feel about football as most football guys in Connecticut do. We love the game and we know how important it is to young people's lives after it's over. So you only get a short window. I hate to see kids miss opportunities because they just weren't exposed early enough and they think it's one thing and it's really another and they, oh, they're filled with regret. I wish I had played that or I know about that sooner. So our mission this summer was trying to do as much of that as we could. It's so important too, coach, to be able to reach out to the communities, regardless of the win loss record, reaching out to the community. And like you said, trying to help, which in a lot of ways over the last year plus even longer, because there's a bad rap that football gets for one reason or another. And I think it's great to be able to show that the game is not this doomsday devil sport that so many people are, have been told that it is. And I think to reach out to within Simsbury and show that, but also too, to help the football players kind of get exposure and just see like, hey, this is, this is the kind of product, this is what I'm doing to the community when they, regardless of however they get into football in their second careers, when they become adults and they have a family and everything and they come back, that is so important. Yeah, I think we, we call the youth camps and the flag football the best nights of the summer. I mean, our, the players, our players get as much out of it as the young players. They, the connection, they're, you know, at one point I was walking through flag football. We had a big pile on our running back and, you know, I had the, uh, there was a kid on the player's back and they were running, like, it was just great. Like, it's a great environment. And I think, you know, the community tie-in when a, a kid walks through the grocery store and they see the kid, oh, that's my camp counselor. He's the running back. You know, they can make that connection. And I just think it ties the community together. We do have a large team. We do, you know, in our small community, they're in the community. And it's always nice to show, you know, that it's not scary. Football players aren't scary. They're, you know, the, the game is not scary. I feel like, and, and I'm sure Matt would agree with this and the other coaches that you talk to, we're ambassadors for the sport of football. We know because we've been part of it our whole lives, how great it is, how different it is and how it can change your life. So I feel like at this point, you know, when the game is under fire for no reason really, that we need to be ambassadors to show like how really actually amazing the game is. I mean, it's our job to do it because no one else is going to do it. So it's kind of one of those things that, like I feel like it's our job at this point that we have to kind of help out, tie that community together, show how amazing it is, you know, through any way possible. You know, you, Bruin from Platt, Shay from, you know, Plainville. I mean, we, we, you know, I can go down the line. I think to, to have you guys as the ambassadors, or, you know, not just for the game, but for the football players itself too, and helping mold the, the young men into, like I mentioned, to their second careers, regardless if that's college football or just getting into school, even if they don't go to college and they want to go into a trade, whatever, whatever path they want to go to. That Join is the circle, so important. Whatever. Exactly. It's so important. I think that's our job. I, I, I mean, it's high school football. It's an amazing tool to propel young people and give them a real reality check of what it's like. It's hard. It's really hard. Life is hard. Uh, football is really hard sometimes. Like no one, you know, it's a rare bird that says, oh man, I can't wait to get to football practice and be on the field for two and a half hours in the 80 degrees. Like you've got to really embrace that, that kind of stuff. And I think that's a, a that's a, a good builder and a good, you know, <laughs> model for how things can be. You know, you have great high end successes in like ecstatic when you win a football game man, it's hard and you are ecstatic and the, you have those little series of victories and, and things and then it can be really hard you know to get knocked down and up and get knocked down and up and like there's a whole series of things that have to come together and that's why it's so beautiful like it's just it's a great example for teaching young people that no matter what comes your way you, you know you've gone through this before at some point if you've played football and you can do it again you can do it again so and I know all football coaches believe that. That's why they do it. Coach Masters, I really do appreciate you coming out. We've just about run out of time. But real quick, as far as the Simsbury football program itself, and it's a shame. I'd love to be able to call a game. 
Got to come up to the NBL so I can call, you know, go up against Pete and Career Academy. Come on. Listen, you never know what's going to happen. Listen, things change all the time around here. You never know. You never know who we're playing next. Our schedule's way different than it used to be. We've actually added uh, Windsor, Maloney. I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, oh, Bloomfield now. Is a, you know, so we have – so we have some new teams on the schedule, excited about that. You know, that's great stuff. Start off with New Britain. That's always fun. New coach there. So, yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Maybe. You got to come up. If you can, schedule that up. I know Pete would love it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have a lot to do with that anymore. <laughs> but, Coach, I really do appreciate you coming on. You're always a pleasure Are to you? be able to have to talk about the game. And, you know, I wish you nothing but the best of luck this season. Thanks, Chris. I do appreciate it. I appreciate the support of the program. Always. You always have done that. I appreciate it. No problem. Now, wrap things up here in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm on Jeremy Find Them All. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody, and be well.